there. All right, so let's get started. So this is sort of a blank canvas from where we sort of start our coding. This is Jupyter Lab. You guys can use Jupyter Notebook. It's a, it's a personal preference. I like to use Jupyter Lab. It's just a better version of Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so um, before we start coding, we need to uh, sort of import all of the libraries, which will help us to um, um, which will help us to analyze all of this data. So let's start with that. So import numpy as np np so num numpy is one of the python packages which allows us to uh, play with the numbers um, uh, very well because remember all of this astronomical data at the end of the day are just numbers zeros ones other uh, other integers float floating integers and all of that so and they are uh, they are, they exist uh, they exist as arrays right two dimensional arrays three dimensional arrays depending on what kind of data you're looking into so well, the first library and the most essential library would be numpy matplotlib would be for um, visualizing the data will also import two special uh, packages which is dedicatedly used in astronomy and these uh, and these and these particular packages are something that I use in my research on a very day-to-day -to -day basis and they would be astropy and apple pie so these are again python packages which are specifically designed for uh, astronomy with all of the libraries declared it's time to sort of an uh, start analyzing the data so uh, uh, let's name this data and let's try to open that data um, uh, let's name it astro data actually and um, fits dot open so um, that that fits function uh, and I'm uh, passing that argument called dot open and uh, what I'm going to do is I'll sort of uh, pass on the name of the file uh, let's see what happens if we uh, press enter so it says that this is an astropy.io uh, gives sort of gives you what's kind of um, in uh, present inside this fits file and um, uh, we can take a look so uh, in this particular tutorial, I'll sort of focus on how the image data sort of looks like. Uh, we can always go on to the table if you guys are specifically interested into um, uh, playing around with table data. And uh, so, and uh, do feel free to let me know all of those in the comment section below. Um, so, okay, let's take a look into the image data. This actually tells you that the image data is present in the in this thing called primary, which is at number zero. Pass another argument called dot data, which will go ahead and extract all of this data that's present in this particular uh, section over here, right? let me press enter um, and then i'll kind of sort of uh, print this below so that you guys can take a look so here you go beautiful so the, the image data actually is nothing but uh, an an array so uh, surprise surprise um, uh, images are basically just arrays of numbers actually depends on how you sort of take that image different telescopes will have different sensors and different sensors uh, will sort of give you uh, these particular values uh, either in zeros and ones or in some complicated float integers or or just like proper integers so um, there you go uh, uh, this image at the back end is something not very gorgeous so here's another fact about astronomy is most of the time you actually deal with a lot of this ugly looking um, <laughs> ugly looking ar arrays uh, uh, initially we, uh, we imported this library called matplotlib uh, this allows us to sort of plot um, any kind of data that we have in this case it's an image data it's an array so I'm gonna use the imshow command and sort of pass on the image uh, data over here and, and and just see what what happens so wow that's so cool and that is the Harsad nebula which looks absolutely gorgeous in my opinion as you saw this image was actually uh, hidden behind all of those ugly looking numbers but if you can pass on through that layer and see beneath all of the beautiful data at the end of the day you get uh, beautiful images like this right so um, 
so that's 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 already looking pretty good in my opinion um, you could also sort of change the uh, change the way this image particularly looks you could also visualize this particular image in a different way by passing this argument inside M show called cmap and uh, cmap is uh, just sort of change uh, cmap stands for color map and that sort of changes uh, the color representation of your image depending on the density of data that you have right so I'm uh, for in this case I'm uh, kind of going to use the inferno one um and just see how oh there you go i think that looks uh, much beautiful to me i i personally use inferno a lot in my uh, research work so i like to uh, represent data uh, this way and it really looks pretty gorgeous too, according to me so as i was mentioning all of this beautiful image is nothing but uh, numbers two-dimensional arrays so why don't we run some statistics and uh, we just uh, find out uh, the basic mean median mode and standard deviation of this particular area right that'll sort of give us an idea about this this image data in reality um, we can do uh, and that should be pretty easy to do so I'll just like sort of uh, print uh, certain commands and let's take a look at the mean first right uh, so the mean would be nothing but um, let's pre uh, so uh, so in this case as I as we uh, recall we uh, we import this library called numpy so numpy uh, basically allows you to um, work with two-dimensional uh, array data even in fact n dimensional array data depending on whatever data you have are, are just like arrays uh, um, numpy is a excellent tool uh, which allows you to do all of that so we'll use we'll we'll use the numpy dot mean uh, function in this case and sort of pass the image um, yeah, image data right that we kind of um, that we kind of declared here and let's try to print and see oh there you go so uh, this image uh, this particular image has a mean of this um, um, now we can also like uh, uh, I'll be lazy and I'll sort of uh, and um, I'll sort of copy uh, the same line of code and for the median uh, it should be I think the command for that is median deviation np dot I think the command is std np dot std Ah, oh, there you go beautiful so uh, as, as I said um, we need to make sense of the data that we're looking at so uh, looking at the Harsa nebula over here now we are pretty certain about uh, this particular image we for one we know the mean of all the pixel values we sort of know its median uh, uh, there are multiple applications where we actually need all of this information and I can I, and I'll go over them later in a future video if you, if you guys want me to. Uh, but you sort of know the mean, median, you sort of know the maximum pixel value, the minimum pixel value, and sort of the standard deviation. So you get a pretty good sense of um, the statistics of your image. With all of that out of the way, let's try to visualize this image in terms of a histogram. So I'm pretty sure when you take a particular image and kind of try to edit that in uh, softwares like Lightroom, and Photoshop, uh, you uh, at the uh, uh, you actually uh, come across histograms, right? So histograms, uh, you you so images are nothing but pixels, and you take up uh, a sort of a, a histogram of all of those pixels combined, and that should follow a particular distribution. So let's take a look at the uh, histogram of this particular Harsa Nebula over here. So the way to do that would be again. Um, so as I told you before, the image data is basically a two-dimensional two data and you pretty much can't get uh, a histogram of two-dimensional data. So we need to sort of flatten that data, uh, flatten that data into one into a one-dimensional array and then take the histogram of it. So again, this is something that I very much use in my own research at other applications where, where I need to study the histogram of some uh, of, of, of a distribution of, of clusters of new forming stars or star forming cores. Um, and, uh, and I used to, uh, and I need to uh, observe how, how that is distributed. So I'll definitely call, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll view at the histogram. So the way to do that would be to uh, um, plt.hist. Again, plt is the uh, matplotlib, matplotlib library that I sort of imported uh, at the top and plt.hist and um, uh, I will call my image data um, but before doing that I need to make sure to so, sort of flatten the data so I'll there you go this is the histogram let's make this is way off for the sake of simplicity, I'll use the 
auto binning function and uh, also remove all of the jargon below and print it once more beautiful there you go so this is the histogram of this particular image doesn't look beautiful it's sort of um, uh, uh, like a bimodal distribution which is speaking at these particular values over there interesting uh, this can have a lot of applications based upon the research that you're carrying out but uh, at the first look this is uh, pretty interesting to look uh, this data sort of peaks at, uh, at these two points now uh, remember I also imported this library called Apple pie now Apple pie is uh, takes all of this to a whole new level and uh, it's, it's, it's a pretty underrated tool, but in my opinion, it, it, it makes a lot of difference, makes your life much more easier um, to, carry, to visualize your data in a, in, in a much uh, better way. Uh, so I'll show you the magic of Apple Pi from my own research, which is pretty ex exciting. So as I have men mentioned multiple times before, I study star forming cores uh, in, in nearby molecular clouds, and I look at the polarization maps of them. So I'm gonna load one of the polarization maps of a nearby star forming region in the Perseus molecular cloud uh, um, uh, in a section called NGC 1333 and uh, let's load uh, that data into Apple Pie and then let's see what Apple Pie can um, can do uh, so here I'm actually uh, loading in the my data which is this uh, which is uh, a map uh, an I map of NGC 1333 I'm using the Apple Pie fits figure function over here and I'm also sort of showing the uh, showing the color map over here. And uh, let's uh, let's call this guy over there. I'll it should take some time. It should take some time, but there you go. It looks gorgeous, doesn't it? So this is actually a star forming. Uh, so this is a part of the Perseus molecular cloud called NGC 1333, and it's in a nearby star forming cloud called Perseus. Um, beautiful. And these blobs that you see here. Uh, they are actually star forming cores. So um, um, uh, in future, all of these blobs will form uh, stars. And uh, as you can see, this data sort of is an RAN deck already, whereas this one, we didn't have any of that information because I was not trying to access all of that information from there and, and print it on this. Uh, but this does, uh, and, and that actually takes a lot of extra steps, but this actually does all of that hard work for you. So I'll go ahead and import the library's pandas in order to sort of uh, load in my uh, coordinates for these uh, cores uh, in, in the NGC 1333 region. I have this particular table. Let's uh, make our, so let's, so let's make our data frame pd.read. Um, it should be pd.read table. So let's, uh, pandas, I'm calling in the read table function and I'm going to pass on the name of my data file. Um, so let's see how this uh, how this particular data table looks. Again, the, this is again, uh, so again, this table uh, is a great representation of uh, the FITS table that I was talking about. So uh, uh, tables like these are very common in astronomy and this is a pretty small table. You can have tables uh, with up to uh, la hundreds of thousands of uh, rows. So, um, and each of these can, uh, be really important so in this case i'm interested in extracting the um, um the ascension and declination of of the core of of, of the course that i'm working on r a and deck right um right ascension and declination and uh, the way that I'll call these particular values is I'll use the DF function, the data frame that I, sorry, the data frame that I created below, uh, created above, and I'll just pass on the column names like that. Should be fairly simple. And for the declination is this guy. Um, and there you go. I have my RAN deck. The, uh, I, can, I can show that to you over here by printing so beautiful values of RAN deck in degrees and let's print out the deck as well so this is your RAN deck in degrees now with oh, now, now since i have all of that information above i can sort of um, show you where exactly those exists in this particular uh, uh, the way to do is is if show markers show markers let's pass RAN deck let's print that beautiful so there you go um okay this uh this looks good but let's kind of change uh the color to edge uh edge color 
yeah there you go that looks much prettier right now that's uh, better uh, that's easier to observe so as you can see i sort of uh, got the coordinates of the ran deck from this huge table that i uh, am called in and then i am sort of uh, plotting all of those uh, on this particular image so uh, again that's pretty exciting so i hope this video was useful and you got to learn something out of it if you did and if you liked what you saw please consider subscribing to the channel because this really gives me a motivation to sort of make more of such content and uh, i'll catch you guys in the next one